This is Larry Williams, and I'm glad to be back here doing a special presentation for StockCharts.com. The real question here is, are we in a bull market or a bear market? There's been some horrible financial news. I'd like to share with you my view of that news, and let's do that right here, right now. It's the Bank of Silicon Valley, right? Uh, my gosh, uh, the largest bankruptcy, bank bankruptcy. What's the significance of these bankruptcies? Do you really know? I'd like to share my research with you today. First of all, here's our cycle forecast. This was done in December last year, which clearly showed the market, this market should start to come down. So could cycles have forecast this? Yes, clearly this market is also cyclical, but that's just a technical view. Here's what I think is the most important view about these bankruptcies going on. And it really comes back. This is not our first rodeo. Remember the bank that was too big to fail? The uh, Continental Illinois Bank, the FDIC, purchased up to $4.5 billion of loans. They protected all bondholders and depositors, but the stockholders were largely wiped out. Same thing with J.P. Morgan. They assumed the bank secured debts and liabilities to depositors. The depositors were made whole. Uh, they did that without FDIC insurance through some private sector financing, but the stockholders were wiped out. That's the same scenario you're going to see. That is the pattern that the FDIC, the Fed, the Treasury Department has set up, and we're seeing it uh, unfa unveil right here uh, as well. Now, this is really interesting. This is the Washington Mutual Collapse in 2008. That is the day they announced the bankruptcy. Market rallied, continued strong for a while. Hmm. The Continental Illinois Bank, which is the biggest failure up to that time, 725 1994, that's when the bankruptcy was announced. In fact, if you go back and look at these bankruptcies, you'll see that most all of the time, the stock market has rallied once the bankruptcy has been announced. I suspect that's a similar pattern that we'll be on in 2023. But what shape is the market in? Well, I wish I was an Arnold shape, huh? I'll bet he wishes he was in that shape too. But what about the shape of the market? I mean, if you read the newspapers or go on the internet, oh my gosh, there's really bullish things, really bearish things. All I can give you is my view based on my research. It doesn't mean I'm going to be right. I'm just another talking head on YouTube, right? But I look at data, not opinions. And I really like to share data with you that I think things that can matter in the market. Things like unemployment, interest rates, housing starts. This, I never really looked at this, but I have recently this year, like, woohoo, really got a lot of information I'm going to share with you about this. Inflation, recessions, market sentiment, cycles, that can help us get a glimpse of the future. And that's really what I try to do is show you what I think the future is going to be based on data. Now, once I talk about the markets later on in this presentation, so stay tuned, I'm going to give you forecasts for Apple, AMD, Amazon, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and gold. Those will come at the end of this presentation. So if you're just interested in individual stocks and the stock market, hold on till then or come back. But in any event, click the little button below, subscribe to this uh, Stock Charts channel so you'll get updates, not only from myself, but they've got some other really good contributors uh, that can give you some good market insight. So uh, click subscribe to the little subscribe button and uh, you'll get updates as more presentations are made. So let's get right to it. Are we in a recession or not? Well, I think the best recession indicators come from the Federal Reserve. I know there's a plethora of people out there with recession services, but I don't think you really need them. I think you just look at the Federal Reserve. The real Tame Sham rural recession indicator has been very good in forecasting recessions. Basically, when it gets above about 0.5, we have been in recessions. And look where we are now. We're not even close. Now, there's another indicator that I like better, the smooth U.S. recession probabilities. And when we get above uh, 10 on that, that's when we've seen recessions in the past. Look at that. Really good recession indicator. And where are we now? Not even close. So let's look at the economy, all the indicators that really go into the economy. And the Federal Reserve in New York just did an interesting um, study of the economy. It shows where it is right now. And it's, it, it's fascinating. Forget the headlines. Forget the Cassandras, Corset, the Perpetual Bulls, Perpetual Bears. Let's look at the data. What's really going on in the economy in the United States of America right now? Well, federal government spending 
added 0.4%. And we can see defense spending and non-defense spending have both gone up. Typically, that's bullish for the market because they're spending. There's going to be job creation. There's going to be expansion of businesses. So that tends to be a positive thing. Notice when defense and non-defense spending started going down, 2021. What happened 2022? Hmm. You know the answer to that. And now we started to move back to the upside. Of course, inflation, I'm going to talk a lot about that in a little bit. But if we look at the core inflation or total inflation, the trend of inflation, that's the 12-month rate of change, has clearly come down. Clearly, we topped out in 2022 in the trend of inflation. That doesn't mean inflation is all over, but this is a very trendable um, market uh, data that we can should start to see this trend come down. You'll see more on that in a little bit. If we look at core inflation over the year, it dipped from 5.7%. Look at core goods. They're way down. So there has been a change in the basic fundamental data that relates to inflation. Of course, what's critical, and I'll get that to in a moment, the Federal Reserve is controlling interest rates in their mind based on inflation. I'm going to show you those relationships coming up. We also look at food inflation. That has also peaked. So there is some good news in this area of inflation, which means that we should see an abatement of higher interest rates from the Fed. And why haven't we gone into a recession? Well, here's the answer, real clear. There's GNP. You know, typically a recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative GNP. Well, we haven't seen that. In fact, GNP, it was up, not a great rate, but 1.7%. So the reason we haven't entered a recession is because business is still good. Business is still going on. There's another index you might want to look at. This is the Chicago uh, Fed Bank National Financial Conditions. This shows the conditions of the economy as they see it. Now, when it gets above zero, this is a zero line right here. It gets up there. Look what happened to stocks. Whoa. It gets up above zero. Look what happened to stock. It gets up above zero. Stocks go down. It got up above zero just before the 87 crash. Got up above zero again. Eh, market didn't go down this time. This time it got above zero. The market did go down. Pretty good indicator of the market. And here we see in 2000, uh, 1999, before the 2000 debacle, it touched it. Prices went down. There was 2007, 2008, got above it. Market went down. Happened in 2012. Market went sideways for a while. It happened before the pandemic crash. And now it's not in that danger condition area. So, the business conditions don't really look all that bad. Oh, I know there are problems. We have inflation. We have relatively high PE values. We have high interest rates. But I think there's light at the end of the tunnel in this because if business is good, companies will make money. And it looks so far like business isn't that bad. I think relationships really matter in the market. If you followed my presentations here on stock charts, you know, I really looked at that a lot. And I'd like to look at some of those relationships that might help us get a sense of the direction of the market. I talked about housing starts, and this is one I really am so excited to share with you. Let me explain the chart. The blue line, of course, is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The black line you see kind of jagged, right? That's the monthly housing starts. And the red line is a cycle, not for the stock market, but the cycle for housing starts. So we can learn a couple of things. When housing starts to come down, stocks usually start to come down. Not always, but typically that happens. Perhaps more importantly, when housing starts bottom, stocks bottom. Look at that. Now, they're not particularly at a low point over here, but the cycle of housing starts was at a low point suggesting stocks should rally. So we can look at not only housing starts themselves, but we can get a precursor of perhaps the future by looking at the cycle of housing starts. Now here's continuing now 1980. There was should be a low in in uh, housing starts, a cyclical bottom, and look what happened to stocks. They rallied. Same thing in that 2002 bear market. There was a low in housing starts. Now if you just look at housing starts. You don't know quite what the data is because it's pretty ragged. But when we smooth it with a cyclical forecast, well, it's right there. And again, it was right there in 2008 before the 2009 bull market began. So, and look what happened. Later, we see another cyclical low. Housing starts are kind of messy in here 
stocks rally, well, look where the cyclical low, the cycle low for housing starts was at the start of the next up move in the stock market. I found this to be a very good leading indicator predictor of what's happening in stock. So here's where we are now. There was the 2009 market. This is the 2016 a cycle low in housing starts. And we're just now coming into a cycle low in housing starts. If you want to really fine tune it, it looks like the real rapid bear market, a uh, bull market, a bear bull market begins once we get this second little leg up over here. And that doesn't start until 2024. But clearly, this leg of the cycle has also been very bullish over a long time period. So <clears throat> bottom line, housing starts are low now. Housing starts go from low to high, low to high, low to high. That's yin yang, right? Low to high, low to high, low to high. Low, what's coming next? Housing starts are going to pick up. I can't tell you exactly when, but somewhere in this time frame where we are now, they will pick up. They did pick up the last month reading a little bit, but not enough to say we've had a bottom in this yet. But clearly, we're in the zone of where housing starts will pick up. And that has been very bullish for the stock market. And here's a bigger blow up. It might give you a longer term view of where we are. 2004 and when we expect housing starts to start to come down a little bit, we be about 2005. And this is a danger area, the second little low in housing starts is 2026, late 2026, 2027. So you builders and people buying and selling homes, speculating in the real estate market, pretty good cyclical idea here for what you're doing and not a bad idea for the stock market. Another indicator that I'd like you to pay attention to that not many people have discussed is the Brave Butters Kelly Leading Index. This comes from the New York Fed and it's been a really good leading indicator of the economy. The gray lines, of course, as you probably realize, are recessions. When this line is coming up, things have been very bullish in the economy, and it is currently coming up. When it starts to roll over, that's when we get problems in the market. Now, if we put that index directly in the market, we get a little bit better view. Notice when it starts to turn up, we're at a market low. Uh, 1970, we're at a market low when it turned up. Uh, 1986, in market low, it turned up. So not a bad indicator, and this is a blow up for it right now. This, the Brave Butter, is a timing tool. When it gets above a four-week moving average, we usually have seen rallies in stock prices. There it was here and back here. So this leading indicator, and that's what we're talking about here. It's a leading. This leads the economy. It's not a lagging indicator. It's developed to show us what the economy will do in the future. And this is what it's doing. So again, despite what we've seen in the stock market, business conditions even the leading conditions of the economy don't look that bad. The thing that I think is the most important, I've probably been laborious on this in stock charts, is unemployment. Unemployment is in red. Stock market is in black. You've got that right. When, when people start to lose their jobs, look what happens. Stocks come down. When they start to get jobs, stocks go up. This is inverted. What a difference it makes. Uh, when people don't have jobs, they can't buy stuff from companies. Companies don't make money. They don't declare dividends, et cetera, et cetera. So if there's one indicator that I think is the most significant here, it's going to be unemployment. So you're probably saying, well, fascinating, Larry. This, you, you got all this bullish, semi-bullish uh, business conditions, the future, unemployment doesn't look that bad. We're going to watch it because if it rolls over here, that would be very negative if people start to lose their jobs and going unemployed, not good. But so what's the problem? Why aren't stocks sailing to the upside? Like I thought that they would, I still think they might, should, but why? So what's the problem then? I'd like to focus on that today. The problem is inflation. That's really the problem that we have going on here. And that's what's driving the Fed. Uh, to have higher interest rates, that's been the problem of the marketplace, what the Fed is doing. So I'd like to show the relationship of inflation to stock prices with you. The red is the Federal Reserve, St. Louis, sticky inflation. It does a pretty good job. Notice when inflation gets high, though, stocks can rally. 
Inflation started to increase in 2002. Stocks rallied. It increased. Stocks rallied. So despite what everybody says about inflation, the relationship was not all that clear. In fact, what I've actually done in these charts is put the stock market forward, and it's the stock market that predicts inflation. In other words, the stock market low here came prior to the low in inflation. Here you see what happened. So this would suggest the stock market now suggests inflation should start to come down. Now, if the stock market collapses in here, more inflation. If we start to turn back to the upside, yeah, for sure, inflation is over with and done. But the stock market has probably been as good of a leading indicator of inflation as you're going to find. Let's go back to our charts. That's the leading indicator of inflation. Now, we can get a better view of inflation if we look at not just the sticky index from the Fed, but the actual rate of change. This is the momentum of the indicator itself. And the momentum of the indicator is really interesting. When it peaks, we're at market lows. Peaks, market lows. Peak, market lows. Peaks, we're at market lows. That's been very stable. When we start to lose inflation, peak, market low. A little bit before the low. Peaked, a great buy point of the market. Peaked again. Peaked again. Well, it has peaked. And again, I don't make up these numbers. These numbers come from the Federal Reserve System. This is just an annualized rate of change of the sticky inflation index. So it suggests that this inflation battle is about over. Now, the thing that puzzles me, if I know this, Chairman Powell must know this, right? What are these guys looking at? I think there's a lot of jawboating going on to bring inflation down. And that in the future, we're going to see more talk and less action in terms of uh, increase uh, interest rates from the Federal Reserve. If we look at Fed funds and inflation, this is really fascinating. Fed funds are black, inflation is blue. Notice Fed funds stopped going up prior to inflation peaking. In 1970, Fed funds stopped going up prior to inflation peaking. In uh, 1980, uh, Fed, Fed funds peaked after inflation, but it doesn't appear that the Federal Reserve has a consistent policy. Here they stopped raising rates, Fed funds stopped going up, and inflation really didn't roll over until 1990, early 1991. Here they peaked Fed funds in 1985, but inflation continued going up. I was hoping to find some type of pattern. If there is any, it looks like Fed funds stopped going up prior to inflation rolling over. Uh, here's a more current view. Here was 2002, inflation goes up. They peaked Fed funds earlier. In 2007, 2008, there's a peak of inflation and maybe over here, and Fed funds were going down prior to inflation. So uh, I can't tell you what the Fed is thinking, but I can show you the data. Uh, and the data right now, they're pretty synonymous. They're both in an uptrend. But if we have a judgment from the past, it would be, once they get a sense that inflation is peaking for whatever reason, then Fed funds start to go down. And you've seen the rate of change of inflation. So I think we're not too far away from the Fed, not necessarily lowering rates, but maybe doing something like this we saw in 2007 or 2000. This seems to be their policy. Let's just hold rates flat until we see changes in the economy. So that's kind of what I think the Fed is doing now. Interestingly enough, I wanted to look at the cycle in Fed funds. Is there a cycle when these guys raise Fed funds? Yeah, it looks like there is. This is about a 5.5-year cycle when we should see Fed funds raised. And there it is, 1980. Again, again, again. I know you're wondering, how about right here, right now? This is the cycle that we're in right now in Fed fund cycle. Pretty consistent. So again, we're close to the end of the cycle of raises in Fed funds. I don't think we're too far away from that, which would be nothing, of course, except very good news for all of us. If we look at Fed funds versus the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's carry this one step further. The Fed funds come down, the stock market rallies. Fed funds go up, though, the stock market rallies. Fed funds come down and the stock market declined. So to find a distinct relationship that says Fed funds go up, stocks should go down, well, that wasn't true there at all. Fed funds went up and stock went way up. Here's Fed funds flat, stocks went up. Fed funds go up, 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 up. Stock go up, 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 up. Fed funds go down, stocks went down. So 
I can't find it. Maybe you can or somebody a lot smarter than me, and they're certainly out there, can tell it. But I cannot find there is a consistent relationship between stocks and Fed funds. It may be bearish, maybe bullish. What's really driving stock prices, I think, are the fears of recession. That's what spooked the market. It's the fears of recession, fears of the economy. Well, you've seen the economy. But what's a Fed really? People, oh, the Fed raised the rate or whatever. That's the driving forces. So with that in mind, let's turn to the stock market itself. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average on a weekly basis. And this is the forecast I see for the market. A little more weakness in here. Start to rally up into May, June. And here's the next, I think, really good buying opportunity around the end of the 1st of July. We have another cycle low. Notice the cycle has been pretty consistent from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. The next big opportunity to the upside, I think, is going to come sometime in the end of June, end of July. In terms of right here, right now, I think it's time for this market to rally to the upside. I'd like to take a look at gold and inflation as well. Uh, you gold guys are going to really appreciate this lesson, I hope. Uh, we've always thought that gold goes up um, when inflation goes up. And we thought that because of what happened in 1970. That gold is obviously the price of gold. Inflation is blue. Inflation went up, gold went up. But later on, we learned when inflation went up, gold came down. Inflation, the blue line again, went up, gold came down. And inflation went up and gold came down. You would think when inflation comes down, then gold wouldn't rally, but it actually rallied. Inflation comes down and gold rallies. Hmm. This has got to be a wake-up call for gold bugs. And let's continue forward with that. Inflation goes way down, 2008 to 2011, and gold had the biggest bull market. In 2018, we had a big run up to 2020. And what was happening in inflation? Nothing, really. But when inflation started to pick up, what happened? Gold went down. So... It should have rallied when inflation went up, right? So this relationship needs to be questioned between gold. In fact, if there is a relationship, I think this is it. Gold leads inflation. Now, here you see the price of gold, and it pushed forward about two years and inflation. And actually, inflation seems to be forecast by gold better than gold being forecast by inflation. Isn't that an interesting insight into the market? I think so. And that's really an important lesson for those of you who are in uh, the gold market and those who want to know about inflation. So this would suggest inflation is choppy for the next couple of years, not directly straight down, but back and forth, which would suggest stock would probably be about the same way. So let's take a close-up look at gold right here, right now. Interesting, I think we're probably headed for a decline in gold. We're using stockcharts.com with my indicators are there. Here's my accumulation measure. Gold made a new high in here, failed in accumulation. Our cycle forecast, which suggests we should rally, now suggests we should come down. The true seasonal also is now to the weak side. So short-term traders in gold, I would look for a decline in this market based just on te technical analysis, looking at accumulation looking at what cycles are suggesting, looking at my true seasonal indicator. I believe this is a rally against the trend and short-term traders should be looking for sell signals in gold. There's a lot of talk about crude oil and inflation. I think crude oil also leads inflation. I'll get right to the punchline right here. This, again, the blue is inflation, right? But I pushed crude oil forward about a year and look how closely inflation follows crude oil. Now we'll go back to that first chart. Remember, crude oil has pushed forward. So this low was known in inflation, the blue line earlier. This pickup in inflation was known earlier because the, the um, purplish line, crude oil, is pushed forward into the future like this. See that? Another indication that inflation should be coming down now based on crude oil. If you look at the CRB index and all the indexes of commodities, it's so heavily weighted by crude oil prices that it's hard to compare the CRB to inflation. So you just strip all that stuff out and you put in uh, crude oil, move it forward compared to inflation, you get a pretty good fit in the market. Another suggestion, I think this is stuff that long-term investors should be made aware of, and there's lessons here for us to learn. So what's next, huh? Well, let's take a look. 
Here's the forecast for you for Apple. Now I'm going to talk about some individual stocks. So if you're not interested in market timing, well, this is going to be about individual stock timing. I think Apple should start to rally here up until the middle of April. And another nice buying opportunity coming around the 1st of June, the latter part of May. In fact, I can tell you that during this cyclical wave, uh, Apple has rallied 80% of the time in the last 22 years, from about the 1st of June into September. Been a strong bullish pattern here. This is what I think is the general roadmap for Apple that it should be following. Here's a specific shorter term swing. You can see what we have coming up in Apple. Got it? And the end of September, I'd look for some type of profit taking in that market. There's a forecast for you. Apple, we look at stockcharts.com. Oh, this is my accumulation of money flow index. They've just started to buy apples. See what happened when the insiders are accumulating Apple back here, back here. Usually the price rallies. So we're getting into the right time zone uh, for the stock, as well as seeing some professional accumulation coming into the market. We look at the trend of Apple. It's actually pretty interesting. Look how strong Apple's been. You know, stocks have come down, but Apple is above my trend following line. Uh, this is my will trend that's in stockcharts.com. Pretty nice short-term indicator buy sell, right? We're above it. That's positive. And clearly, Apple has been stronger than the stock market itself. Okay, let's look at AMD. You may have seen this on Mad Money a couple of days ago, but so much information here, I want to share this with you as well. 84% of the time, AMD has rallied from about the middle of March until October 6th. And the pattern has been a big up move till May 10th, down till about July 15th, and up again. So that's the pattern. This is one of the hot stocks in the market, right? And again, it's been stronger than the market. This is a pattern I think we're going to see uh, in this market. So you want to pay attention to that as well. And this pattern has been real consistent. Here it is in 2021, ran up, pull back, run up, run up, pull back, run up. And that was um, 2016 run up pull back and didn't have much of a run up there run up pull back run up got the pattern that doesn't always work nothing always works in this business but we do have is a very high probability trade that's what i look for i think that's what you want if not write a comment let me know but it's a high probability trade is it always perfect no nothing is perfect in this business but by and large is going back to 2020 it's been a pretty good pattern for traders to follow in the marketplace. So there's an AMD forecast for you to give you an idea about that stock. And there it is again, 84% of the time, this up leg, down leg, up leg. That's what I'm looking for in the market. There are cycle forecasts, pretty much the same thing, April up, down, back up again. Okay, and AMD with stockchart.com, it's above our wheel trend stop. So that's a good idea. Market is positive. You could buy breakouts, et cetera, but it, it continues to be positive on a daily basis. And we have seen some accumulation coming to the market. Again, this is my accumulation money flow index. Usually when these people start buying, prices rally. So there we are. Amazon, let's talk about Amazon a little bit. Amazon, the intermediate term cycles are in red. We're right here right now for rally time. The longer term cycle is in blue. So it looks like we have a nice buy point again coming up about July. And Amazon, we should rally, have some type of a pullback and rally back to the upside. This move from June until September, I know it's a long ways out there, isn't it? But write it down, put it on a postcard and mail it to yourself, I guess. Amazon has rallied 83% of the time in this cyclical way from about the second week of June into October. So again, we see a high probability trade coming up in Amazon. And we can look at stockcharts.com. Now, this is below my will trend, which suggests until it gets above it, we'd want to keep our powder dry. Accumulation hasn't started to come in quite yet, but we see, oh, we're set up. Now let's go to the daily chart and wait for a trend change to get above the rally in the marketplace. Well, that's about it, guys. It's all we're about to shouting. I hope you've enjoyed this session. I hope you've learned something. Uh, again, uh, go to stockcharts.com, uh, sign up for these uh, webinars. I haven't done one for quite a while. I hope to be doing one again in the future. Um, and again, boy, I am not perfect in this business and I've never met anybody that is. But I think if we can really look at the data in the economy and the stock market, we got a lot better idea and more confidence and that's going to make you and me better traders. So until next time, this is Larry Williams wishing you good luck and good trading. <music>